Hello and welcome to the Modular DM where I make everything from dungeons to taverns that can fit into just about any campaign or setting. I'll do all the hard work so that you busy or lazy DMs out there can have a little bit easier time getting ready for your upcoming session. This time on episode 2 of the Modular DM we're going to be creating a coastal tavern that hides a nefarious secret beneath its floorboards. This is the Salty Seabird. Going to go ahead and get started here by designing the Salty Seabird itself. Obviously things will get a little more interesting as we flesh out this tavern and move on to whatever secrets it's hiding. I think we're going to go ahead and give it obviously a spacious open uh, main area and then maybe a couple back rooms as well. We've got the bar, we'll go ahead, we'll add some bar stools, we'll add in some tables as well. We'll do as much seating as we can out here, I think. Maybe we'll even do like a little uh, patio kind of area. And then we'll do some sort of storehouse in the back. the first time I've really gotten to appreciate the wood details on some of these. I just feel like it wouldn't look right being this seaside tavern if the stools and the tables and everything weren't clearly made out of wooden planks. I think we'll go ahead and keep everything up here nice and tidy. This is the upright establishment, of course, but I think that this tavern is going to have some sort of link to the seedy underworld. We've got these back rooms coming along now. We'll do we'll do like a storehouse room, and that's where we're going to put the trap door, I think. That's where the secret entrance to what's going on underneath the tavern here is going to be. And then we'll do a little bedroom-type place for the owner of the Salty Seabird. I will be honest, we're probably going to see a lot of different coastal setting stuff because that is just something that really resonates with me. I honestly have a huge life goal to live on the ocean as soon as I can. So I know my goal is to create stuff that can go into pretty much any campaign or setting. So 
If the ocean coastal vibe isn't really working for you, feel free to reflavor it into whatever fits your setting. And obviously you would want this upper level in particular to be filled with sailors and businessmen, merchants and deck hands, just really teeming with life because it creates a good facade for everything that's hidden beneath. I'm thinking that we're going to hide the trapdoor underneath one of these barrels or something. It seems a little obvious, but maybe the guards here get paid off, or maybe they just don't look too closely. Again with the red dotted lines to show a change in depth, and I'll go ahead and add the little ladder figures as well in a second here. I think we'll go ahead and start out with just a little narrow hallway. I think that the thieves and rapscallions here would be smart enough to lay some sort of trap to prevent any, let's say, curious people from making their way all the way down and discovering their secrets. We'll drop a little portcullis here that can drop down either behind the heroes or maybe even on top of them. And we'll throw a lever in the next room that maybe some guards can pull if they hear someone coming. I think this will be like the watch room. Uh, we'll do maybe a little table and a couple barrels or two. Uh, anyone who's stationed in here, I don't think that they would be too on edge. I doubt that many people find their way down into this underbelly. So maybe there's two guards and one of them's just playing solitaire, playing cards by himself on a table and the other one's lounging, half drunk probably, sitting on the barrel in the corner. Not sure if you guys noticed last time, I don't actually know what these little triangle arrow things are meant to be. Maybe it's like an arrow slit or something, but I like to use them as levers. I just think that it's a good representation. As much as I love Dungeonographer, it doesn't have assets for everything, but any programs that had enough assets were just way too complicated and didn't make these cool, simple, like retro style maps that I like. So. Yeah, right now we kind of pinch hit with what we have, and I think it's okay because I think it's still pretty self-explanatory, especially once the text is up on the map. We'll have this one branch off a little bit too. I think it would make sense to have a whole handful of separate rooms. But this one, this might be the most important room. This is going to be a secret tavern and bar underneath the actual tavern and bar. Uh, we'll call this the Marauder's Cove. So this is owned and operated by some well-off thief and pirate that wants to provide a safe haven for other 
thieves and pirates. He may be a bad guy, but he is also a businessman. So, yeah, we'll add a bar here, we'll add a couple tables, a couple stools, and I think we'll get around to adding a secret room as well, where this guy has a hiding place for any treasure that he's picked up or stolen, and any process or proceeds, proceeds that the tavern itself makes. Yeah, and this is going to be that secret treasure room in the back. I think that's a really cool idea. We'll say that the proprietor of this secret thieves tavern down here, who we'll call Jackson Frazier. I think that that's a good piratey bad name here. Only he and his barkeep, Billy, know about this secret room. And we'll say that in the past, someday it was magically hidden it's just a it's a stone door in the carved stone walls and at some point jackson paid someone to hide it and billy and jackson are the only two who know about it or have the magical medallions that it takes to open the hidden door So we're going to do this bigger room. I think that the bigger room might be sort of like an inn for people who can't stay at normal inns. They're too high profile. They would get caught. The authorities would get called. This is a safe haven from everyone from bandits to pirates to thieves and pickpockets. This small room, I think, is going to be Jackson's quarters as well. I think that he would live here, and I think that, of course, because the man has pride, he would have his own quarters. They would be nicer. They've got a door with, you know, probably a fancy, heavy lock on it that no one else can get access to. not quite sure what to do with that last room on the bottom right quite yet. I'm sure we'll come up with a good idea for it though. Oh, here's an idea. Obviously, you can't be going up for supplies very often. So maybe there's, yeah, a well ties down to the groundwater deep beneath the city or something. And Ooh, I think it would make sense also to have a secret exit here, like a back entrance that can be a ladder that runs up into the storm sewers. 
Yeah. And we'll say that the sewers are this intense, crazy maze of tunnels filled with giant rats and all kinds of other creatures, so barely anybody could even find their way to the Marauder's Cove down here, and even fewer would be able to survive making it here. We'll set these up, sort of boarding house style. We'll call them, in air quotes, the barracks. Um, we'll give them a little fire pit in the middle that can go up through a grate also to the storm sewers so that the smoke doesn't kill everybody. This is like the place to go if you're a pirate or a thief or really anybody who just needs to lay low. They've got food and drink and a place to stay. There's connections. This is good. Yeah, there's got to be a grate at the bottom of this ladder, otherwise the whole space would get flooded every time there was overflow from the storm sewer. So we'll see there's a grate at the bottom that drops into some lower tier of the storm sewer, but the ladder itself goes into a maze of tunnels that maybe lets out actually in the port, maybe... Maybe it's down the coast a little bit that it drains out into the sea or something. And that's a good place where you can anchor your ship so that if you're one of the few who know the way and who can make it, you can get into the Marauder's Cove with absolutely zero visibility from anyone in town. Now we'll go ahead and add colors for the different layers as well. I think that the dungeon itself is about finished. Uh, we'll do brown for the wood on the patio, and we'll do brown for the trap door. In general, I like to leave the inside of the map white though, so we'll just use the same colors outside of the map to represent uh, different levels of the map. We'll do the light gray for ground level, and then we'll do this darker gray to show that this is all underground and hidden beneath the streets and the cobblestone of whatever village this is in. We'll do a lighter gray around the ladder again just to represent the fact that it goes back up. And now we're going to get into numbering all the different rooms and writing out descriptions and everything. So let's talk plot hooks. I think, well, first of all, a lot of adventuring parties aren't that great of people to begin with. So maybe the idea is through a connection of a connection of a guy you met whose brother you'd accidentally killed because he stole your stuff. Maybe you just found out about this place and you're coming to check it out. Uh, or, if you're trying to play the good guys, maybe, I don't know, maybe the guards are tired of looking the other way. Or maybe there's a new police chief and we go with the cliche that he's trying to be an iron fist and provide order in a way that, you know, the leadership of the past hasn't and he's really cracking down because, of course, to some extent, everybody knows about this place, but it's like the Godfather, you just don't mess with them, you know? 
So that could be an option. Or maybe Jackson Frazier killed your father and you need to come and get revenge or he stole from you or something. Or maybe you're looking for Jackson Frazier to do business. Maybe you want a partnership. These are all some interesting ideas. Ooh, or here's another one. Maybe you're here to steal from that secret treasure room. Maybe there's some artifact you need, or maybe there's a key, or a map even. If we're really going hard with the whole pirate coastal thing here, maybe he has a map to a treasure or to a legend that you're in pursuit of. That would be very cool. That's the kind of thing I would like to run. I like that a lot. So as we're wrapping up here guys, I just want to reiterate that if this doesn't fit with your setting or you're not into the ocean and the coast and pirates, then that's totally okay. Run your own game. But I would hope that this could be transferred to any campaign or setting really easily. So anyway, thanks guys. I appreciate you watching the video. If you have any questions or feedback, drop it down in the comments. If you like this, if you want to see more, if you want to throw these things into your campaigns, uh, go ahead and like and subscribe. So, yeah. It's always a pleasure to make something for you guys, and um, we'll see you soon.